Hey guys, did you hear that uh, Bitwarden is completely unhackable? Uh, no, didn't hear that. <laughs> no, that's because it's bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Well, is it? I mean, we'll 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 answer that question coming up. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Hey, dudes, how you been? Good. Good. How you doing? Good. Yeah. I can't complain, but I do anyway. Mm-hmm. I noticed that. Nobody listens. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't listening. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Something. What'd you say? <laughs> That's a way for me to get slapped by my wife. She uh, goes, you never listen to me. And I look up and say, I'm sorry. Did you say something? <laughs> Slap. <laughs> when, I, when I got back from the war, my wife got mad at me because I ignored her a lot. And then I got my diagnosis when I got out of the military that I lost my hearing on this side. Yeah. <laughs> and so That's I'm like, the side you sit at the table, right? Yeah. Exonerated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We have one, two, three, four, five, six stories here. What are we starting with? I guess we're going to lead with last pass, right? Heck yeah, we will. Yeah. Um, All right. Not a good look. Seems like all we talk about is password managers these days, but. Well, that they are kind of the most fundamental way that you can protect yourself, aren't they? Heck yeah. It's the new patching. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to patch. Just yeah. Speaking of which, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Aww, LastPass could have nice used segue. a patch. <laughs> yeah, so it turns out. Uh, the whole LastPass breach happened uh, through an employee's, uh, a high access developer employee's home computer that was breached. Um, oh. And it was breached target through the Plex media server that was unpatched. Wow. There, was a, there was a CVE. For, so for those of you who don't know what Plex is, uh, Plex is for- We've talked about it before. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a media server. You put videos up there, and you can stream them to all your devices in the house. You can be your own Netflix. You can be your own Netflix. Yeah, you have it in your home. You must own all of the movies you put up there. Yeah. However, is there air quotes there? Hey, um, hey, hey! And it's a double edged <laughs> sword for me because you know I create content, I create mm-hmm. music, and I want people to pay mm-hmm. for it. But at the 100%. same time. I don't want to pay for anything else. No, well, if, if you have home movies, <laughs> let's talk home movies. So let's say you have a large trove of home movies. You can put them in right. a Netflix-like interface yes. and share them out. And it's it's a great software. Yep. Um, I didn't realize that if you just missed one patch, you'd be in such trouble. I know, right? Um, so this was this was, but they didn't miss one patch, did they? This was a publicly disclosed remote code execution flaw in May of 2020. So it's been almost three years. Seventy five um, versions <laughs> have come and gone. Flex <laughs> media server. So this wow. is this goes back to what we talked about: is people don't yeah. think about what needs to be patched. Right, right. They, they patch their right. system. They patch their laptop. They patch their desktop, mm-hmm. and they probably patch their phone. And they probably patch their tablets because they, they, you know, they're they're in their face. But do they patch their cameras? Do they patch their media server? Do they patch everything else? Do they even know what needs to be patched? Do they unplug their smart TVs? No. Right? They should. Or patch them. Exactly. Do they patch? I smart. I patch my smart TVs. I, I, I unplugged mine. I've met Dwayne. Until <laughs> I unplugged mine. Until I can turn it on, in a, you know, turn off the Wi-Fi, turn it on and uh, patch it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I always, I, it's tough with something like media servers though. Like for Plex media server, it's not like when you're streaming movies from it, it says, Oh, by the way, you're connecting to a media server that's mm-hmm. 10 revs behind. Uh-huh. So literally the only place you see that Plex media server isn't updated is if you go to the back end settings on the server. And, and I'll uh-huh. tell you, I have a Plex media server and. I'm never on the server. I don't need to be to upload videos right. like home videos and I don't need to be to view the videos. So why right. would you ever be on that? Right. So you just have here's to be why. diligent about patching. Well, here's <laughs> why. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um, so right. apparently you could upload, you could go, if you were able to exploit this, you were able to upload, uh, go to the camera upload feature where you could upload pictures that you could view on the streaming media service and you could right. upload a malicious file there that gets executed. Huh. And that's how they broke in. Wow. Now, did they have to impressive. guess a password to get in there? Did they have to get credentials or? <laughs> yeah, this guy wasn't that's using off. LastPass. So that, no, I'm not kidding. I have no idea. I don't know. Um, usually, <laughs> yes. Honestly, I mean, the way my Plex server is set up, 
you have to authenticate either to Plex or to my Google or to some other SSO, right? So mm. there has to be a username and password to log into Plex. Well, it says an attacker who already had admin access to a Plex media server could abuse the camera mm-hmm. upload feature. So basically, they 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 probably brute forced the password or used. They went on the dark web and found passwords this person used in other places and caught them as with wow. password reuse or pass similar password reuse. What's the moral of the story? Don't use Plex. No, oh my kidding. gosh! No, no. I'm kidding. Patch. Patch. Don't use the internet. Yeah, yeah. don't use the internet. <laughs> Unplug the internet. Un- unplug everything. Yeah. Uh, the sky is falling. Yeah. Um, you know, hoist it on your own petard, as they say. What is a petard? Anybody? Well, I, th- I think it's hoisted by your own petard. Yeah. And if you, if there's a subtle difference, right? <laughs> hoisted on your own petard or hoisted by? <laughs> I think a petard is a sword. Yeah, but I think it's metaphoric for you know yeah. what. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. What's next? What, Carl? What's it? Never mind. Go ahead. What's next? Uh, Android. Android. The next thing is a vulnerability in Android. Um, so this is, this is, you know, here on security this week, we love to do the, um, what's the thing you should patch right now? Uh, maybe even pause the podcast and go patch. And this is it this week. Yeah. Um, so Android patches two critical remote code execution vulnerabilities. And you know, we all love the RCEs, the way that we can run code, um, without actually being authenticated. But this was 60 flaws that it patched. Yeah. 60. It's kind of a lot. That's a lot. Among two critical severity remote code execution vulnerabilities. And it's, it's only if you're running Android version 11. 12 or 13. Oh, so any build <laughs> who runs who runs the latest Androids? Nobody that I know. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Uh so if you're running Android 11, 12 or 13 on any mm. of your devices, you want to go to settings, system, system update uh and you want to click that update button, which if you're listening to this podcast, you should already be clicking on those update That's right. buttons, but pause um, it right now and update. And come we'll back. Wait. We'll wait. We'll, we'll be hum here. The theme of Jeopardy. We promise. We'll be here. <laughs> so well, we I can't a, promise that. Actually, I have a petard update. Okay, <laughs> John Luc Petard. <laughs> so hoist, hoist, hoist with his own petard is from Hamlet, and I knew I recognized it. Okay, and it's from the ce- it's from the scene where he stabs Polonius. Uh, hopefully, that's not a spoiler. It's been four hundred oh, years. Oh man, um, I had that one and, on my Netflix but, queue. But a petard is a a breaching charge. Yeah. It's a it's a so if you get hoisted, it's it blows you up. It blows uh, up the, the the person using it. So okay. to hoist with his own petard is to be blown up by your own breaching charge. Okay, I thought it was a sword. Sorry. All right. Okay. Correction. I have to be correct about weapons. I think it has morphed um, into a metaphor for you know what. So yes. Either way, I think uh, I think for you learned something here on security this week. If it had nothing to do with security, <laughs> That's right? And go watch Hamlet. <laughs> and go watch Hamlet. Or if you if you're keto. Omelet. That's <laughs> uh, omelet. Go that's the keto version omelet. of Hamlet. Actually, Hamlet's pretty keto. Hamlet, isn't it? yeah, actually, yeah. ham and cheeselet. Ooh, <laughs> you get me hungry. All right, how about just ham omelet? Okay. Uh, so Android, go patch. Nuff said. Next. Nuff said. Oh, this next one I love. This one's so awesome. Okay. So we are going to talk a little bit about the black mamba. Which is pretty Black un- Mamba. The Black Mamba. I had that so, once. I went to doctor. Doctor, give me cream. I'll go away. <laughs> Black Mamba, good. So what's what's this is neat. So a lot of people are talking about ChatGPT, and ChatGPT is just a, a you know large language modeling software that can do answer questions and and kind of looks like you're talking to a human. And, and a lot of people have been thinking, okay, what if I use this in cybersecurity? And yeah. we've done this where we take code and we want it to be swizzled. That's a technical term. Yeah. Um, swizzled into a different language or written in a different way that wouldn't be identified. Um, so there was a security team who said, wow, it'd be really cool if we could get a keylogger to do this. Now, keylogger. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a piece of software that would sit on your computer and log usernames and passwords and every site you visit and all the things you type. So pretty dangerous. Yeah. So they said, hmm, what if we were to take this large language modeling, kind of like chat GPT, 
and we take the basics of a keylogger and every time it runs, it rewrites itself. And there's a term for that in the, in the virus world. Um, and it's called polymorphic. So a polymorphic virus or piece of malware is something that changes consistently. Mm. So it gets to the point where endpoint detection systems and antivirus can't identify it. They can't yeah. say, oh, this is a keylogger because it looks different every single time. Um, and although all of the antivirus out there say they look at behaviors and it doesn't matter what the file looks like, 90% of that's kind of BS. They, a lot of times they just look at the file um, and don't look at the behaviors. And they were able to successfully um, get a, a keylogger to run and run differently every single time while still logging usernames and passwords and sites that were visited. Wow. And then they exfiltrated the data over Microsoft Teams, which is our favorite exfiltration so, um, piece of software, which is nice. So the big impact on this is this is stuff that we've been doing forever when we need mm -hmm. something done, Dwayne, or want somebody in the team that that he leads for that stuff just swizzles it and adds a change. So it's not recognized. This is going to lower that, that level. So people who aren't as skilled as Dwayne and his team will be able to do this kind of thing. Wow. And so it's basically democratizing this area of hacking, which is bad. Yeah, it's bad. Speaking of GPT version four is coming out next week. So excited. I'm going to, I bet I'm going to, um, add a link to it so uh gpt4 is coming next week and it will be multimodal says microsoft germany mm -hmm. here's well, what it's not homicidal right <laughs> here's what we're gonna do all of all of uh security this week next week will be just three versions of chat gpt talking to each other that's a great that's idea right i love there. that how do you know it's not already <laughs> uh. Very good. Well played, sir. Well it's played. None of us will actually take the uh, apologize for being wrong and and take an opposite view. So that's how you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say something? <laughs> no. Hey, we're gonna take a short break and we'll be right back. Stick around, and the uh, the Bitwarden story is coming right up, so you don't oh, want to miss Bitwarden. it. Bitwarden. All right, and we're back. You're listening to Security This Week. I'm Carl Franklin. Those are my friends, Patrick Hines and Dwayne LaFlotte, no, no. the security experts in the room. And uh, we are now going to come to our headliner, our headline story, which is mm. hackers might be able to crack this top password manager, a.k.a. Bitwarden, and steal your logins. Okay. Dum, dum, dum. So, so before you go there, this is you could insert any software, any system in the world, and that would be a true statement. Because right. <laughs> Everything has vulnerabilities until they're found. Mm. Yeah. So, however, I they BS. found this in 2018 and still enabled the feature that's a very popular feature called autofill that allows it to be hacked. All right. So let me just read this for you. One of the most popular free password managers, Bitwarden, has a major security flaw that could allow hackers to steal your credentials in an identity theft attack. The autofill feature in Bitwarden, the open source password manager, is the root of the problem, allowing bad inline frames, iframes, remember the 90s, anybody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that are contained within trusted websites to capture your login details. So first of all, you have to be using the autofill feature. I do not. No. And you also have to go onto a site that has an inline frame mm -hmm. on the site that you're logging into that has some malicious stuff in it. It's, so it has to be a hacked site. Yep. Right. It's not completely out of the norm. It's possible. No, but it is possible. But cross-site scripting attacks, things like that. But the question then is, is this feature enabled by default? Yes. So it, autofill yeah, is. It is. But in the latest version of the download, it's not. Yeah. Um, Bit, Bitwarden has claimed that the latest version of the apps do keep it off by default, but lots of people turn it back on because it's convenient, Super right? Super convenient. Eh. Hey, that's my line. Yeah, and what's interesting <laughs> is um, I agree with Carl. You know, the the you're going to see a lot of hype here um, right. around password managers, right? And hey, we hyped it. You're listening, aren't oh, heck you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually. So let me ask you guys a question. Have you noticed? Have you noticed that every single day this week there's been a train derailment? Yeah, I have noticed that. Yeah. Did you know that last year there were 1,200 train derailments in the United States? What? Wow. There's, I did not know there's, that. There's an average of like three a day for the last 12 years. 
the, every day there's somebody uh, like three trains derail. It's not unusual. It's not something that's been newsworthy. Well, the Ohio ones and the Greek Greece one were were pretty bad. They were, and, and I'm not saying they're not bad. It's just that now the news is reporting about every single train derailment. Right, of course. Yeah, and it just seems like wow, look at all these trains. It's like oh my god. And so I did a look up, and I'm like, oh, you know, how many train derailments were there last year? And they were like. 1200 wow. in the United States. Okay. Now, some of them are very minor, and I'm not trying to make any uh, minimization of what happened in Ohio or Greece, but we should understand that we don't have an epidemic right, okay. of train derailments more than we already did. Yeah. Right. Maybe we should fix those trains. Uh, probably a good idea. And we don't have an epidemic of Bitwarden hacks more than we have exactly. had since See? 20 yeah. get my drift. You get me, Carl. Yeah. Okay, yeah. everybody can stop <laughs> listening now, right? Now that we gave away our secrets for clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, so, you know, one of the things we want to warn you of is you're going, and this is a great, it's a great point, Patrick. You're going to start seeing a lot of these articles and a lot of the news sites like hyping this up. Password managers, you know, terrible things. Um, and, and they really are going to keep you more secure. And, and things like this where we see Bitwarden where it's like, okay, yeah, if somebody were to attack a website and maybe inject an iframe, they mm. possibly could. You know, there's a lot of ifs, maybes, and possibilities in there. Right. I mean, did you hear about the fact that there's flammable gas? Uh, extremely high levels of flammable gas in every household and every building in the United States. <laughs> it's called every, oxygen. In every car. Right? Too. <laughs> oxygen is incredibly flammable. Uh, and caustic as well. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hydrogen, the most abundant element in the world, is completely flammable. Ever heard of the Hindenburg accident? Or the ocean? Or the it's ocean. Full of hydrogen. Full well, of hydrogen and oxygen. The ocean doesn't explode Ticking like the Hindenburg. Did, How did however. we get into a comedy riff about chemistry? I really don't know. It's, we should stay in our lane. <laughs> yeah, we're pissing off all the chemists on this podcast. That's right. Both of them. Both of them. Both yeah. of them. Uh, okay, so, so back you know, to ransomware. Or are we done with yeah. Bitwarden? I, I think that the moral of this story is take the news articles and the headlines with a grain of salt. You, you should be anyways, but we're going to start to see a lot of people picking on password managers. Don't lose faith in password managers. You really should be using them. You should. And don't use autofill. Yeah, and don't use autofill. You don't need it. And I wouldn't, I, you know what else I did? Because I use Chrome. Chrome has a way to remember passwords, right? I completely mm-hmm. turned that off. Yeah, me too. Completely turned it off. So now the only thing I have to do when I go to a website is I go to my Bitwarden extension and I and yep. I click the password copy to clipboard button. Uh, I'm sure that's not the safest thing in the world because if I remember correctly, LastPass used to remove it from the clipboard after either it was pasted or 30 seconds or something like that. Yep. But Bitwarden does not. So we're building up a, a, a identity theft, identity protection um, webinar course, whatever, because I've been going through um a lot of this people coming after me they're not getting anything but they've been coming after me my uh-huh. financial institution stuff uh-huh. and one of the things in the presentation was we built um a graphic that showed the the levels of p- this password management which we thought about a little bit so the uh. lowest level is what everybody's doing which is i use the same password or something like the same password everywhere but right. i capitalize the first letter i add a number to the last thing yeah and i turn the s's into dollar signs yeah. and the at signs yeah. it's it's crazy that's the old that's the worst style that's what most what too many people are doing right. the next level is to write it down in a notebook and put it in your kitchen junk drawer yeah. at least or in your wallet it's not or you or something I, your wallet scares me just as much <laughs> not great but at least you'd have different passwords and at least they'd need physical access. And the mm-hmm. next level is to use the browser. Mm-hmm. So while th- you're right, you should shut that browser thing off. If you aren't going to use a password manager, it's the poor man's browser man. It's a poor man's password manager. Right. It's better than nothing. Right. And then the password manager is really where you want to go. It's the gold standard. Right. And, and don't use autofill. You know, it's, it's too bad. It's good. It's good that LastPass had this problem right. in some ways because it keeps us talking about it. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's move on to ransomware because that's a happy subject. Yeah, yeah, ransomware poor children. Yeah, so you remember last week we talked about that uh, there was a ransomware attack on Minneapolis School District that shut it down. So the ransomware gang that did that posted a video of the data. Ugh. Yeah, this is unique. 
Um, so there, you know, first off, I, you know, it's pretty low to ransomware like grandmas and schools and that sort of stuff. That's um, ridiculous. Not cool. Like hit hit another target. Teachers don't get paid enough. Never mind spilling out millions of dollars for right. ransomware. Hit Chick Fil A for Christ's sake. <laughs> No, it isn't. No, it's not. Criminals with morals. It's a joke. Views of Carl Franklin are not reflect those of (laughs) Chick Fil A. Is awesome. Eat it. It'll give you diabetes. Fantastic. God bless America. (laughs) And on that note, um, no. So what's 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 uh, an interesting tactic here is they claim they the ransomware group claimed to have exfiltrated a ton of data, and instead of just releasing snippets of the data, they actually released a video of themselves looking through all of the data. Um, Oddly enough, the Minneapolis Public School District says. They've done their own forensics and there's no, they've, they've detected no possible access of any data that was sensitive. Meh. So is this kind of like the sushi terrorist? Maybe. Like, you know, posting yeah. videos and bragging on it online about it. Is that what they were doing? Well, and it's weird. They're, they're looking for the MPS to pay a million dollars for them to delete the data. And every, they have a deadline, I believe, of the 17th of this month. And for every day that they want to push past the 17th, it costs an extra $50,000. But were they, were they, did they incriminate themselves with this video? I don't know. I mean, honestly, the, I, they, they're using it as proof that they have the data. Now, okay. it could be if they were smart, I guess. Um, let's say you didn't have enough time to exfiltrate all the data, but you did have a browser window open because it could be terabytes of data, right? Mm-hmm. But you did have a browser window open where you could see the data. Maybe they just took a video of that and they don't actually have the data, right? So, yeah. it's hard to tell um, what they do and don't have. But uh, yeah. anyways, MPS has said they're not paying. They're like, listen, we don't have a, we don't have a million dollars. Were they talking in a fake Russian accent? <laughs> Moose and squirrel. <laughs> da. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah. it's just, so, I mean, this is interesting. Yeah. We'll see what happens here. So, it's about, it's about revealing the data. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because they've already they've already restored from backup. They're already up and yeah, running. Yeah, Sick. right. So the MPS was like, "Listen, we're not paying you. We've already restored from backup. Go away." And they're like, "Oh, but we have all this sensitive data." And MPS is like, "We don't think you do." And they're like, "All right, well, we're going to sell it on the dark web for a million dollars." So there, and MPS is like, "All right, and enjoy because you don't have anything." Yeah. So well, it'll be interesting to see what does or doesn't come out of this. But Patrick Tomahawks. Tomahawks. If I knew where they were, <laughs> if I knew where they were, where the tomahawks were, or the well, hackers? No, the yeah. hackers. Maybe the. Uh, I know where the tomahawks Patrick, are. I know where the tomahawks are. Maybe the video has some metadata that shows the GPS location of it. Right. I'd love to see them go down. That would be oh a gosh, great yeah. thing. I'm. I'm not doubting that they have the data. They may have the data. There's just a school. We know school districts. We've done some work with some school districts. Sure. Not to be named. Oh, yeah. Um, and they have so many access points. There's so much data. It's hard. There. Yeah. Yeah. And regulations. I can't think of a job harder than keeping a, a school district safe because the insider threats are legion. It's how hard is it to find a kid who, you know, will stick something into a network oh jack gosh. or, yeah. or, yeah. you know, come and do something. Um, and they're there all the time. It's not like they're, you know, you can keep, kick, you can't even keep them out. Right. Right. Um, right. So insider threats are a big problem. Um, I don't doubt that they probably could have the data, but I don't know what's so sensitive about it. I mean, right. you know, the names and ages of, of the kids, they, they probably don't have photos. So compliant, yeah, compliance wise, I could be FERPA laws. Sure. My school district didn't have pictures, but then again, I lived in the dark ages. Yeah, but that was like, it was like in the 40s. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right, Sonny. Sonny boy. Why? I'm going to yeah. flip you like a cheese sandwich. You're only 12 years younger than me. You know that, They had right? to use flash powder at the top for the big poof. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Um... Yeah, okay. so my guess is it w- the only thing they'd be concerned with would be either like sensitive account information, like banking information for the school district, and that sort of stuff might suck. Um, mm. But also information about the kids. Yeah, they wouldn't sell that; they'd use that. Yeah, so well, you would they think had so, that, right? If that was yeah. included, they'd be using it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. 
All right, Bobby Tables, cough up some dough or I'm going <laughs> to leak your well, grades. Look at it from the administrator. Look look at it from the administrator, the superintendent of school and the, and the CIO of, of this school district. Everyone knows they got hit. Right. If they just like, okay, yeah, we got hit and they probably got copies of our data and it's breached and it's out there. Yep. Are you going to trust them that they're going to delete it? <laughs> no. No, no. So especially if they can sell it. There's no motivation to uh to 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 believe them. To pay the ransom. There you go. Change all their bank accounts and their credit card numbers and yeah. have at yep. it. Move, Move on. along. Yep. yep. Yeah. And all the kids just need to change their names. Right. All right. What the heck is emotet? E M O T E T. Emotet. Emotet. Um so it's interesting. We've seen emotet. Emotet is a, a piece of malware that's deployed primarily over phishing. And and we've seen this attack for years now. It's a dropper, right? It's kind of an old tactic dropper. Um, so in dropper, what Patrick you, means here is like you'll, you'll deploy this malware and it usually is for gaining either access to, to a company or it could have another malicious payload that does crypto That's, or something yeah. along those lines. Right. But it's not itself necessarily going to do much. Um, it's a conveyance. But, what, but what's interesting about this, this is we see Emotet coming and going. It Right. Um, and what, what blows my mind is A, it's deployed over phishing. So email, which, okay, lots of people should be concerned with what they're clicking on an email. If you're, if I send you a zip file that you have to unzip and then extract an ISO and then go in there to run an executable, which looks like a Word doc. Yeah. You're probably in a bad place. Don't be doing that. Yeah. Don't do that. But secondly, what it does is it actually the it's deployed via macros in Word and Excel. Yeah. Which I, I still blows my mind that that works because last year Microsoft disabled macros by default. Right. So if you have been updating your office deployment at all over the last year and a half. Well, there's the problem right there. Yeah, this <laughs> this won't run. Like it literally it's super hard to get the macro to run. You have to like click enable and then say, "Yeah, it's okay." And then say, "I absolve you Microsoft of anything stupid I do uh-huh. like allowing this piece of ransomware to run and then it runs." Yeah, but we know we know there's a large population that hasn't paid attention to this stuff ever. No, oh, so yeah. So the, the things that we consider like, "Oh, that's just obvious." Well, and and even some of the things some of the things it does on the side like you know, they're using this super sophisticated Reg32, RegServe32 on a DLL to run the executable. And you're like, oh, God, you're bringing me back to the 90s, man. <laughs> exactly, right? Like, you're like, wow, that was a tactic back, you know, before the internet existed. Yeah. Um, and it's cool. It still works, I guess. But weird. Active so, X. I don't know. Yeah. So, you you know, we see Imhotet. It surprises me every day that it still is infecting people but please Mm. dear god go out and patch your office and make sure that you have macros disabled it's just about they've they've come up with a convincing enough narrative to get the person to do things Mm. and that person doesn't know the history yeah right doesn't know that this is an old thing it's like the the nigerian prince is a is a story we tell Mm -hmm. because it's like so Uh. it was so popular but there's probably a bunch of people who still don't know what we're talking about right oh yeah uh there used to be emails that claim to be from a nigerian prince they're probably still coming out coming regularly uh who had a fortune that they needed to get out of the country and they were going to give you 10 percent if you took their 56 million and all they need is your bank account information wait i'm not getting that oh (laughs) <laughs> right huh. and the ability and they'll deposit the money i've got a complaint um i was on facebook and i saw this ad because they advertised to me on facebook because i buy stupid shit. <laughs> and and they had these little gps trackers that are magnetic and they show a guy putting it under his car and dropping it in a gas tank and you know uh I, i've seen those too right you've seen those right yeah, yeah, yeah. so i ordered a couple and oh did you nice how do they work no, doesn't. Not only do you need a SIM card not included uh-huh. that has internet uh-huh. access, yeah. but you need a memory chip. The manual, quote unquote, is like a five page fold out Chinese English translation yeah. that is so bad. There's no URLs for where you can get these things. There's no details on how mm-hmm. to get them. This is a piece of junk. And I think it's a scam personally oh yeah and it probably yep. does work if you have all these other things that are required for it no no batteries 
No, nothing. Like, I don't even know if it requires a battery. I plug it in, nothing happens, right? So it's not charging. There's no Bluetooth connection. Like, you know, I can't find it. And if I try to pair it, there's no pairing instructions. It, it, it's so bad that it's borderline criminal. How much did it cost? Uh, so I bought four of them and it was like a hundred bucks. So they were 25 bucks. Yeah. If, if you I, want, when, when I see you next, you, you should give me one. I'll reverse engineer and I'll tell you what it really does. That's fantastic. I would, <laughs> okay. I, I will do that for you. <laughs> but, uh, anyone else, I would stay away from these things that sound too good to be true because they're cheap. Oh, yeah. Chinese and they don't, they're not complete. Unfortunately, uh, Facebook's probably going to come after us now. Uh, Facebook ads, um, I'm hearing a lot about people who are like buying sneakers yes. and they're never getting shipped. Yes. Oh, no. Yeah, Facebook ads are notoriously terrible. Yeah. Right. So you're lucky you got something. Yeah, well, yeah. Count yourself lucky. Cambridge Analytica. Wasn't that Facebook? Facebook ads? Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. They, they, yeah. in that case, they sold the data to them. Right. Right. All right. So back Ugh. to Emotet. Uh, is there anything we can do about this or should we be concerned? Uh, yeah. Update your office. The only thing that's the only thing that is even remotely interesting about the Emotet attack is the fact that the DLL that they load, the piece of code that they load. It's an executable that lo- loads in memory. Yeah, it's 500 meg in size. Wow. Right? Which for for those, it's like orders of magnet. It's about 100 orders of magnitude larger than any DLL on your system. I had hard drives smaller than that. Right? The reason they do that is because antivirus won't scan it. I love it. Because it's too large. So it's the only interesting tactic at all I'm seeing in this attack. Other than that, this is it's mundane 1995's BS. So it's padded with zeros or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Ugh. All right. Well, you know, sorry for the clickbait about Bitwarden, but there was, you know, some good advice there. Don't use the autofill and turn off the autofill on your browser and get used to going up to that little extension and. Copying the password into the clipboard. Eventually, that headline will be correct. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to have vulnerabilities. It doesn't mean it's junk. Hackable. Right. It's just yep. how they deal with it. All right. Yep. Be, be careful yep. out there, kids. Don't take any wooden nickels. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be pretty valuable if you could carve right. a nickel. It'd be wood, right? Bye. Uh, Bye. See ya. Bye.